Hi, my name is Phil Firon, and in this session I'm just going to be showing uh, producing a very simple uh, web application using the Saxon CE XSLT processor. So I'm using XML Choir, which is an XSLT editor specially adapted for this processor, but you could actually use any XSLT editor, it's just that this one is specially extended for Saxon CE. So it's generating uh, code for me and there's um, IntelliSense for me as well on this. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is creating a new web project and so I'm going to um, call it my demo and what this does is it creates on my web server, on my local web server, it creates a folder with three resource files one of which is the HTML file, then there's the XML file, and an XSL file. And just to have a look at those, um, my demo, so that's the initial HTML page, and in fact the only HTML page we're going to be using. And uh, it just, uh, the XML editor has created for me just a skeleton uh, HTML file with with the title set to the project name that I'd selected and um, there are a couple of script elements that it's inserted for me as well because it's got a reference to the Saxon CE processor so it's added in a, a link so that the Saxon CE processor is loaded first and then it's inserted it's auto generated some uh, JavaScript code that uh, once the processor has loaded, it will run Saxon and with the style sheet called mydemo.xsl and with a source with mydemo.xml, which are these two other files that were created. So that's all that's happened at the moment. And then just some uh, basic skeleton uh, HTML here. One thing to note is that it's inserted a div element with an ID of main, and that's comes into play when we look at the XSL which I'll switch to now and so this just has a single template that uh, matches the root node but has also got a name of main and at the first instruction is actually a result document instruction so this is extended in Saxon CE to allow you to update an identified DOM element and it's identified through the href using a special syntax so hash main means uh, uh, select the, any element with an ID of main or the first element with an ID of main hopefully there's just one and append content to it and it's creating a literal result element of unordered list supplying templates to the each item in the items element so of the source document so if we have a quick look at the source document we'll see that it comprises an items element and a number of item elements so that's consistent with that um, and then going down here we'll have a look at the template that matches each item element and all it's doing is inserting a list item for each of those item elements. So if I put in a URL here that corresponds to um, where the this HTML file was created, so it's on my local host and it's my demo, my demo .html. Okay, so what that has done is it's opened in the, the actual web browser of this application, the website. So I can switch between the editor and the web browser just by pressing a button on the toolbar. So this is the newly created uh, file. And what I can then do is, you'll see in this bar at the top here, it shows the XPath location of the mouse cursor as it hovers over the browser. So I find this quite useful when um, finding what content has been added dynamically to the uh, HTML browser DOM. So if we go down we'll see that each div has got uh, we're inside a, a, the div element that's got an ID of main and then we've got a number of list items that have been added. So 
Uh, for this demonstration, the first thing that I want to do is change the XSL. So I'll switch back to the XSL so that for each uh, list item, as well as adding a text node uh, for that matches the item value, I'm going to add an ID attribute as well, which we will use because that can be used independently. And we're going to um, set that also to be the same as the, the text node for that item element. So if I now save that and then go back to this, we should see that each list item now has an ID attribute that corresponds to, to the value. So that, that's the only change that we've made so far, but we're going to use that ID attribute in a practical solution that it might be that the ID attribute and the actual text content differ. So that's the reason. I'm just uh, taking a bit of a shortcut there. Uh, so going back to the XSL, what I now want to do is set up a template that will handle uh, a click event on any list item. So the way that I do that is set up a, a template that's going to match any list item. But now I use a special um, mode that uses an extension prefix for the namespace, for the IXSL namespace. And what this does is it identifies that this template is going to match a special event. And this is going to be an on-click event. OK, now each time a list item is clicked, what I would like to do is to change the, the hash, the URL hash that you see in the address bar of a browser sometimes. In fact, this, this hasn't got one at the moment, but we should see that change. So what I'm going to do then is use a, an extension, prop, extension instruction called setProperty set property and I'm going to set and the name for the property that I need to change is it's within the client object model and it's called location dot hash so that belongs to the the window object which I am um, I don't have to set because that's the the default object for this instruction and also I need to select a value for that now that has got to be a string so I I need to cast that to a string because um, you will get problems when interfacing with a JavaScript side if uh, if you send the wrong type. So if I make sure that I send a string there. So what I should see with that is each time someone clicks on a list item that uh, we will see the hash change there. So I'm just going to check everything step by step as we make changes to ensure that my logic is sound. So if I click on that, we'll see that the hash change, there has been a change there and it's added London onto the end there. And if I then select another item, we'll have a look back and it's added Rome on as the, the hash value for that URL. So, so far so good. So let's go back now. So we've got the behavior that we want uh, when we respond to a user event. Um, but now what we want to do is have behavior that responds to that hash change event. Uh, the reason why I'm, uh, I've got this level of indirection here is to allow the browser to actually maintain the state of what event has been clicked itself without me having to uh, use any other method and we'll see the value of that later on. So now I want another template but this time I'm going to match um, r rather than on a node which is the normal kind of uh, matching that you would be doing this is going to match on the JavaScript object and specifically the window object so this is a special in extension function that returns the window object. We're going to use the same 
a technique for specifying a special um, event using the mode attributes using IXSL namespace. But this event is called on hash change. Okay. And within the hash change, I first of all want to get a, a value for the item that uh, I want to get the hash value. So let's get, set up a variable and we're going to get the hash value and select equals. So I use an IXSL get function, another extension function, and I want to get the hash value. So that's getting, so I'm using the window object again and then I need to add the name of the property that I'm retrieving so that's location dot hash again so that should um, let's just check because I'm I need to make sure that I've got the uh, client object model right. So let's just do a check. And um, value of select equals, before we do anything further, we just um, add some diagnostics into this. So hash. OK. And now I'm going, I'll save that. And then I'll go over to here. So what I need to do, because I'm write, using XSL message now, that writes output to the console. So in a normal browser that would be the developer tools console. In this editor it's got something equivalent to that. Uh, but there's just a bit of extra uh, capability here which allows me to um, set a log level there. But in fact, all that's done is actually change the URL within here, and it's inserted as a special log level equals info parameter. So if you're using a normal browser, you would just insert that parameter yourself. So we're now able to see some diagnostics as we uh, proceed through the transform. So if I do a click event here, um, we'll see that... Uh, we do get a a value come out, but it's actually uh, preceded by the hash symbol. So that must be the, the way the client object model returns a value. So we don't really want that hash value in there. So let's do a substring on the whole of that. So substring. start at the second character and then switch back and so now when I click we, we've got rid of that hash character so that's good because then uh, that will correspond to the uh, list item uh, ID attribute so if we then go back so we've got the hash value um, we'll get rid of that message we don't need that anymore um, I'm going to use a for each and I'm going to select every item, every list item. So that's, I have to start with using an extension function to return the HTML page to set the context for the expression. Then it's HTML body, then there's the div element itself, then there's UL, then there's the LI. And that should work. And then what I'm going to do now is set a variable um, and I'm going to call it its name color and this will change according to whether um, the hash matches the list item ID attribute or not. And so we can color to show that we've got a match. That's the idea. So if um, id equals dollar hash oh. 
then yellow else white okay and now all we have to do is um, change the background color so I'm going to use a, a set attribute instruction another ex extension instruction and what we're going to do is change the style so I'm going to use an extension namespace called style so I can change the just the color uh, property for the style element and we're going to set it to be color actually I think I prefer to have a background color for changing so uh, that should work so let's try that so as I select an item it sets the background color to yellow for the ID that matches what we actually have in the URL. So we can't see the, the URL changing all the time, but you can see we've got the URL there of Prague, and that matches that there. So if we select Rome there and go back and have a look at the URL, you see. So that's uh, the way that we maintain state um, within the browser. and. Uh, the, the reason for that is um, so that the history recorded by the browser will maintain information for us so that if the user clicks on the back button or bookmarks a particular at a particular state then when they uh, return back to that state either by using the, the browser uh, forward button or by um, reusing a bookmark then we can render the page as they last left it so just to show this browser hasn't got um, back and next buttons because it's embedded within the editor um, I should add some, some of, but I can press alt and left arrow to achieve the same thing and you'll see that that is moving between the buttons I'm honestly not clicking with the mouse there when we're doing that. That's just um, using alt left and alt right with the keyboard. Um, so that concludes the demonstration of building a simple application using an XSLT editor that provides a, a responsive user interface and that deals with state within state changes within the browser using event handling both for system events uh, the hash change event and for DOM events, the, the click event on the list item. Thank you for listening.